Okay, Carl Schilling uh, here with you again. And um, today we want to continue along uh, on our uh, basic training. You know, so far we have uh, started to discuss um, the sales process or having a sales process. As we've said, not, uh, there's not one sales process for every uh, sales agent, but every sales agent needs one sales process. Otherwise, you are totally selling by accident. And this comes back to the uh, uh, por portions of the training where we discuss uh, specialization versus a generalization as well. Because in being a generalist, uh, it, you, there are some, don't get me wrong, th th there's some generalists who have uh, figured out how to uh, make good livings. Um, most don't. But uh, again, in that, in that generalization, uh, the ones who've done well also have uh, spent a huge amount of budgeting on uh, marketing. So um, unless you have a huge budget to market, being a, a generalist, uh, it, it, it doesn't pan out. Um, being all things to all people and ending up being nothing to no one um, rarely works. But if you can um, have huge budgets and throw enough, um, uh, you know, uh, if you throw enough mud in the wall, uh, some is going to stick, okay? But again, when you get down to profitability and cost effectiveness, it doesn't always uh, work out so well. So today, we're going to uh, continue along the pathway. We've, uh, we've, we've, discussed, we've talked about uh, the prospecting aspect of this, and we're going to get deeper in that in the next uh, session. We're going to be on nothing but prospecting. But we've gone from prospecting to the approach. We discussed those together combined. And then we went into discovery, which is really the whole process. It's, it's, it's the Megillah of the process is uh, you do a good enough uh, job in discovery and you will have a very high uh, uh, retention rate. You'll have a very high closing rate. You'll, you'll just have a very, very strong practice. Okay. So um, uh, I'm going to go over to the screen share for us and get us um, the, uh, slides for today and we will go into uh finalizing a little bit on that uh, discovery and right into our uh next portions of the uh, process okay all right let me get rid of this okay so we talked about these uh, give people what they want and uh, let us get to We discussed the discovery process, and we want to get to here. Okay, so uh, the key in this discovery process is uh, balancing out the need and the want. And we've got to make sure that people um, make their own decision on their need. Not that we create a need for them. That's, that's one of the great uh, mistakes um, that, that, that happened in most uh, most preset sales presentations assume a couple of things. They assume that the need exists and they assume that the person's going to immediately uh, attach and buy into the lead, uh, uh, the need, excuse me. Um, but that's just not the case psychologically, okay? So um, when you look at that predetermined solution to an already assumed need, what starts to happen is you, you're, you're moving into the world of persuasion because people are not immediately attached emotionally, psychologically, to the supposed need. Uh, in other words, they have not created a desire to want to solve this need. This is why single sale selling is such a, uh, a, a damaging aspect because a single sales, need, a single sales uh, type of process only covers one specific solution and it assumes that that solution is the right one for all the people that they serve. So we really don't want to get into that kind of thing, all right? So creating a need has long been the industry's, um, I guess the industry's positioning on, uh, on how you make a sales process is to create a need. Uh, but you really can't create a need and be successful in building a relationship. Because if you're going to create a need, it's going to be artificial to the point of the client actually accepting that need. 
See, until they buy in emotionally, until they buy into the fact that this need truly exists, you're creating an artificial, um, uh, an artificial solution in a sense, because it's a need they haven't yet bought into. They have to buy into it emotionally. Emotionally buying in means they want something. There's a big difference between needing something and wanting something. And once you get people who want something, now you can solve anything it is because you can simply give them what they want. And that's where the discovery process is so important to use it as a, um, as a total uh, th that's why the word discovery, you use it as an opening, you use it as an opportunity to discuss the uh, issues, discuss all of the psychological preferences, discuss the emotional preferences, find out truly what is on the minds of the, um, of the client. So now in this issue, we have to get to the point of how do you think personally, and this is where uh, the rubber meets the road for most uh, most agents. Uh, first of all, in this industry and what we do, you must have an abundant mindset. You must believe the fact that the world ha is, has an abundance of opportunity. The world has an abundance of uh, solutions. It has an abundance of uh, things for us, okay? You can't believe in the world of scarcity. Uh, sadly, the industry, because of the uh, the high level of failure and rejection, uh, the, the industry chews up people with a scarcity mindset. So w you either have to erase the scarcity mindset uh, uh, totally, uh, or you will be doomed to failure in this industry. So, so we need an abundant mindset. Now, when we do that, you can make transparency your, your total belief pattern. In other words, there's no secrets. There's, there's really nothing you can't be transparent about. You know, uh, you ever get all this stuff for agents' eyes only? Now, I know there's some things regulatory-wise we can't discuss, and that's okay. Those things are not meant to be transparent because they are uh, compliance issues. They are issues that uh, have to stay um, opaque. But most of the other stuff it can be totally transparent. So you don't need to worry when speaking with a client, you don't got to worry about sales techniques and, and any tricks and manipulations because we can be totally transparent. The more transparent you can be, the easier it is to create a relationship. And let's be honest, if you're going to create a, a relationship, you're going to have transparency. What transparencies, uh, um, you know, what relationships are not based and built upon transparency? None. You know, whether it's loved ones, friends, acquaintances, whatever those relationships are, and clients, by the way, should be as powerful a relationship uh, as any other relationship, they're all built on being transparent, all right? So really what you've got uh, is, is an issue of, uh, you know, investment philosophies that people may or may not have. That's where you're helping create awareness. People have core strategies. They just aren't familiar with them many times. But they have strategies. People have processes they go through on a regular basis. They've got biases that are already built in. They're not familiar with them. That's your job to help explore those in discovery and help people see those. Once they see those, they can uh, make changes. So they have those core strategies. So that's really what clear transparency is. But let's look at what equates to clear transparency. It's kind of simple. It's full disclosure. Full disclosure means that all of the little small print in, in a contract, and a life insurance is different than everything else. Life insurance is a contract. It's truly a contract. That means that it's between both the, the uh, insured and the insurance uh, carrier, as well as yourself in the middle. But it's a contract. Each has to perform their own side of the duty. The insured has to put up um, uh, money. They put up money in the form you know, of, of their, their process, and the insurance company puts up risk uh, retention and protection on their side of the contract. And they both have to do the things that they're supposed to do on their sides of the contract. Okay? So full disclosure is very, very important. Everything should be disclosed. There should be nothing hidden. Everything is transparent. 
Due diligence is a big part for people of clear transparency. Now, this is on their responsibility. They're the ones that have the responsibility of doing their due diligence and making sure that whatever it is they're getting involved in is the right thing for them. Of course, you can help them along in this pathway, but that's where, pers that's where persuasion becomes so uh, uh, manipulative. In a due diligence process, you're supposed to help people identify for their own benefit the things that are best for them. Continuous contact. That means that you're not leaving a client the minute the contract is signed, sealed, the ink is dried. You're there for ongoing support, help, and um, uh, certainly you're there to help move this client towards financial independence, which also helps you because there's other solutions besides this one transaction that you just completed. You should have multiple transactions. There's other things that are going to come into this cycle of becoming financially independent. Uh, so you are the one to do that. Um, third party endorsements are always very, very powerful. People are, are always looking for the power of third party endorsement. That's why we have the Advocacy Network. The Advocacy Network gives a, a financial concierge the power of third party endorsement. We've, as an organization, helped people save over eight and a half million dollars. Now we've, we've uh, Every one of those dollars has been a dollar that would have been lost in some form of a financial victimization. That's a pretty powerful endorsement when our financial concierges can, can rely and lean on that. It's almost like a good housekeeping seal of approval. So you want to give people what they want, okay? But let's look at the hierarchy of needs uh, that people have. You know, number one, um, there is a... Um, there's a, a marketing strategy is basically to give people what they want, okay, as far as, far as not creating uh, artificial needs. But the hierarchy is what your prospect or client wants. I mean, that's number one. Number one is what they want, not what you think they want and not what you think they need, what they want. Now, there's a process to get them into the position where emotionally they become attached to the right thing for them. However, that's a different process than the process mostly used, okay? And what you want, what do you want? Now, what you want, obviously, is you want to continue to grow yourself financially as well by solving the needs of the people that you serve. Obviously, that's what you want. But again, if you, di if you dig deeper, what you truly want is to give your prospect or client what they want. That's what you should want. Now, what your company or service provider wants many, many times is not concerned with what your prospect or client wants. So you have to recognize that. That does not say anything negative. It just is the fact that companies are driven by sales projections, sales numbers. They want the bottom line. Okay, that's fine. They want the bottom line, but many, many times, effectively, they're not really compassionately or even logically concerned with what a client wants, okay? Because the products are already pre-established, the products are already built, the contracts are already built, it is what it is, it's pretty black and white. There's not uh, a real uh, flexibility, there's some flexibility in insurance, life insurance contracts, but there's not a there's not a kind of menu uh, out there where you can build a, a contract, sort of build a bear kind of deal. These things are built um, to touch certain markets, to primarily solve certain needs within certain markets, and that's the way it is. So they're not really concerned with what a person wants. That's your job, okay? Your job is to be concerned with what they want. So we're going to close out uh, uh, two, more, uh, two more sessions. We've got two more sessions where we are going to talk about, uh, go back to the steps in the process. And uh, really what I'm going to do is, is um, 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 get a little deeper on prospecting, okay? And uh, then we're going to look at the steps in the transparency process to close out. So next session, we are going to talk about prospecting primarily. We're going to talk about um, how to select markets, how to penetrate markets, how to use certain tools. And uh, those are the things that we are going to discuss uh, fully in our next session. Okay. So 
Uh, thanks so much. Again, Carl Schilling with you. Good out there. Uh, get busy. But look, uh, change a little, a uh, little change you want to make. Give people what they want. Try that. Try focusing on what they want um, and, and, and moving them towards what they should want. But again, not pressuring them into that. Just kind of moving them around a little bit uh, by disengaging your own ego from this process, okay? I look forward to seeing you the next time and um, uh, keep, uh, keep selling, keep out there, uh, get, get, get a, a very good uh, uh, process going, keep that pipeline filled. Don't ever, uh, don't ever let the pipeline fade, okay? Have a great day.